What's up everybody and welcome back. As always, I'm Bill Olson, a local realtor here in the greater Charleston area. And today we are going to be talking about the pros and the cons of living in Somerville. Um, if you're unfamiliar, Somerville is a suburb of Charleston located about 30 to 35 minutes or more, depending on where you are in Somerville, it's quite large, from the peninsula of Charleston. So we're gonna get right into why people are moving here and what the pros are. And our first pro of living in Somerville are the schools. Now, Somerville Falls in Dorchester District 2, which apart from Mount Pleasant is one of the most desirable school districts in the area. Now, on niche.com, the uh, schools do have an A- rating, and on greatschools.org, a majority of Dorchester District 2 is a 6 out of 10 or higher. Number 2 is probably one of the biggest reasons why people move to Somerville, and that is the housing prices. Now, while Mount Pleasant and Somerville both have very desirable schools, they have very drastically different price points. The closer you are to downtown and or the beaches, the more expensive housing gets. Now, when you look at a map, Somerville being 30 to 40 minutes from downtown, you're gonna get significantly less housing costs. To put that into perspective, right now, the average cost of a home in the entire greater Charleston area is about 430,000. In Somerville, you're looking at 300,000. That's a significant savings in your monthly payment. Our number three pro of Charleston, you know, while you are a little further from downtown, what helps is the gas prices. Now, gas prices in South Carolina in general are significantly lower than most of the country, but it also vary, varies within our region. For example, in Somerville, right now at the time of this filming, we're looking at about $1.65 to $1.75 per gallon. Now, when you get down closer to the beaches in Mount Pleasant and James Island, you're looking at over $1.90 per gallon. So there's some significant savings in fuel costs. Our next pro is something that I talk about in all these videos because it's worth mentioning, and that is the weather. Now, the pros and the cons of the weather. So we'll, we'll get to the cons after this in our next section, but the pros of the weather in Somerville mainly fall between fall and spring. Now, fall and spring, you're going to have average high temperatures in the mid 60s to mid 70s with cooler evenings, kind of what I consider the perfect temperature. And in the winter, you know, it's gonna drop down to, you know, mid 40s, mid 50s, low 60s as the highs. We get the occasional below freezing days. Um, but for the most part, those months are absolutely gorgeous and wonderful. Sometimes just a, a light jacket is all you need. So if you're moving from up north, just hang on to one winter coat. And our last pro actually has to do with a specific person that moves to Somerville. And that's because Somerville is actually perfect for military families. Now, when you take these pros that we talked about first, you know, the great schools and the low housing costs, and you bundle that with the proximity to Joint Base Charleston, we see a lot of military personnel purchasing homes in Somerville using their VA benefits. Okay, so that is the good. Now we gotta talk about the bad. Here are the five cons of living in Somerville, and the number one is going to be your commute. Now this isn't gonna be for everybody, but most of the jobs are in North Charleston or down into the Charleston Peninsula. So if you live in Somerville, which again is a large area, during rush hour, it's not uncommon to have an hour or possibly more commute into downtown and again on your way home. If you're coming from a much larger city, this isn't gonna be a factor for you because you may be used to spending two hours in the car to get to and from work. But because of the size of our city, you know, it is significant traffic for us. 
The good news out of this is we are seeing a lot of industry move to Somerville or just north of Somerville. We just opened a large Volvo plant where they're making two vehicles and Walmart actually just announced a massive distribution facility that's going to be going into Ridgeville here in probably the next two years that'll be done and it's going to bring over a thousand jobs. If you want more information on that, um, check out this video right here. Or maybe it's right here. I don't remember which side. Our number two con also has to do with driving time, uh, but not to and from work. Uh, we're talking about to and from the beaches. Now, if you're someone who wants to be at the beach every Saturday and Sunday, you know, one thing to take into consideration is that without traffic, you're looking at about a 40 minute drive to the beach. Now, it's not gonna be like that all the time because in peak beach season, because our beaches are barrier islands, there's one road that goes in and out. So traffic can back up. So you could be looking at an hour or more to get to the beach and then you've gotta find parking, unload your car, get down to the beach. By then, I'm, I'm ready to go home. Now, a way around this, is to get to the beach super early, but again, being 45 minutes or more from the beach, you know, the beach is supposed to be relaxing. To me, waking up super early just to get down to the beach to beat traffic does not sound like a relaxing day to me. For our number three con, we're heading back to the weather on this one, and we're gonna talk about the incredibly hot and humid summers. So here in the low country, during the summer, our average high temperatures are in the upper 80s and into the low to mid 90s. But once you add in all the humidity, we have a heat index of 105 or pushing or above 115 to where just looking out your window makes you sweat. Who knows, you may be one of those weird people that loves the heat and the humidity. So, you know, you can flip flop these pros and cons of the weather, but either way, I think one of them is gonna be a pro and one of them is gonna be a con for just about everybody. And our number four con we're gonna talk about are the mosquitoes and the alligators, basically anything that can bite you. So first with the mosquitoes, cause they are the bigger pest, smaller, but bigger problem. Because we have such high temperatures that mosquitoes do thrive in, we see them most of the year. Now, once temperatures start getting even higher, that's when mosquitoes start breeding. And what they love to breed in is stagnant water. Up in Somerville, there's plenty of that, whether it's retention ponds or tidal creeks, water that doesn't move very much, that's where mosquitoes are gonna lay their eggs. One way to help you combat that in your own yard, if you have any bird baths or kid toys that fill with water, you know, it takes about 12 days for the egg to hatch. So once a week, empty everything out, rinse it real good, and refill it. And it, it should help, but again, mosquitoes are everywhere. Some of them even as big as your fist. No, they're not, but they seem like it. And then something that bites less, but harder, are the alligators. Now, to a lot of people, this isn't a big deal. I've had some people that said they won't live anywhere near water because they're terrified of alligators getting their kids, their dogs, or them. Um, so it is something to be aware of, but I don't think it's something to be truly frightened about. Now, by any means, you're not gonna find me swimming in any of this water, but I'm not afraid of an alligator. So if you do see an alligator in your neighborhood, in a pond, chances are it's not gonna come near you as long as you don't feed it. The second people start feeding alligators, they start associating people with food, and that's when they come up to us. Don't get close to them to take pictures. By any means, don't let your little dogs near them. And once they get too large, then animal control will come in and relocate them for the safety of the neighborhood. If you have anything that I miss, let's, let's drop those down in the comments below. And if you're thinking of moving to Somerville, give me a call, shoot me a text, drop me an email. Let me know what questions I can ask for you so that we can make it as smooth as possible. Again, my name is Bill Olson. I'm a realtor here in the greater Charleston area and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye.